hello thanks very much for clicking on today and thanks for all your comments and messages and thanks for the new subscribers it's fantastic i've been looking seriously at my lfp battery and what it does i've had the car for 10 months and the range of the car has gone down six miles which isn't much um, but when i started looking at what the percentage was uh, it worked out at 2.2 percent that's the range i've lost after 7700 miles now when i looked at the tesla website it suggested that you should lose about one percent over 20,000 miles well clearly i was not doing as well as that so i started looking at the lfp battery and the things it does can do and the things it can't do advantages and disadvantages and there are many advantages it's cheaper to produce they last longer it uses fewer materials and you can charge to 100 percent after 10,000 charges you should only lose about 20 percent degradation which is fantastic which means that it's a million mile car if you put 100 miles in and it would take 10,000 charges the car should then do a million miles that, um, there are testers out there that do a million, miles. Do a million miles there are very few disadvantages one it is a little bit heavier than other batteries and there's one other that i've only heard once and it was from sandy manro and i'll tell you about that in in just a moment so I started looking if I could do better with the range degradation. And a lot of people said, well, it's perfectly normal. That's 2.2%, 7,700 miles is normal. However, Tesla do say 20,000 miles, 1%, and I'm well off of that. So that was really my baseline. But maybe like all other companies, they just exaggerate a bit. I've had lots of really interesting comments. So in my previous two videos, the question I had was, should I continue charging to 100% or should I charge just to 80%? And that really was my dilemma because up until getting the car, I didn't think I was going to get an LFT battery with it. And I thought I would be charging 80, 90%. And when it arrived, Tesla said, no, you charge to 100% all the time. And I thought, well, that's jolly good. So let's now have a look at some of, the, of your comments. Ivan Stefanik said that it's, it's perfectly normal. Tesla will lose the biggest percentage of range in the beginning. And then it will stabilise. It's it just not Tesla. It's every battery type. Nigel in Sheffield says that the batteries do this. Yeah? They seem to lose capacity initially and then don't lose much for a very long time. And he says that the end of life comes relatively quickly after a very, very long life. But he says, don't worry, the car will have fallen to bits long before the uh, the batteries will give out. And that's from Nigel Finn Sheffield. Wakey Warriors says the LFP battery needs 100% charge to get an accurate reading. So by not charging to 100% at home once a week, you will lose range. Don't charge to 100% on the supercharger, even LFP. I think you need a rethink. This is because I had said I was going to only going to charge to 80%. Rax Tesla, he's from Canada, and he said that he took delivery of his uh, LFP battery in January, and the range has gone down about nine kilometres. I'm in Canada, and I don't plan my trips based on the displayed range because the car always takes me farther than the displayed range, even while using AC or heat. Enjoy the car and keep it on percentage. Mm, I do like to know the miles I'm going to go. The next comment is from Haya Don. He, he says uh, he's done 9,000 miles at 1.9%. So he's done more miles than me and has a lower degradation. And he charges 100% daily from home. He says he's going to start charging to 80% from here on and see if there's any further degradation. So thanks for that. Flashback asks, how often do you use Tesla superchargers in a lifetime? Uh, he's lost 1.1% 1 .1 over 3,600 miles, uh, always charging to 100%. Now, he sounds exactly the same as me. 1.1, 1 .1, I'm at 2.2, 2, 3,600 miles, 7,007. We're very similar there. Well, the answer to that is about 50% because on road trips and uh, to Scotland twice, uh, Wales and the Isle of Wight, and I'm in Cornwall. And uh, but I can go months without using them. For instance, the next few months, I doubt if I'm going to use them hardly at all. So that's interesting from flashback. The Shafi QM says it's most likely because I use uh, superchargers all the time, but I don't. Harry Kerr says that this is his speculation on why the LFP battery needs to be charged occasionally to 100%. 
yeah, I'm agreeing with that. When I said earlier on I was going to charge to 80%, I then changed it that I will definitely charge it to 100% before a road trip. And on road trips, do a mixture because I need an accurate uh, range prediction from the car where I don't need it if I'm only doing a few miles at home every day. So he says it, uh, occasionally charge it to 100% in order to keep the range of calculation in calibration. Well put. The reason is that the voltage state of charge curve on the LFP battery is so flat the voltage can't be used to determine the state of charge, except at 100%. That makes an awful lot of sense to me. Thank you for that. Jason Francoza says that Tesla's engineers are some of the best in the world. They know what they are doing. Charge to 100% when needed and don't worry about it. Well, that sounds great. Thanks very much uh, for that, Jason. That was great. RB says that charging LFP batteries to 100% periodically has two main benefits. Balances of cell voltage and accuracy resets the charge level for battery monitoring, but it would suggest doing 100% just before a road trip in order to ensure the range is calculated accuracy. And this, this is, of course, he was responded to what I had said, that I was going to go to 80% charging at home, perhaps charge 100% once a week and definitely before a road trip and during a road trip. And that road trip may likely to be 100%, 90% and 80%. So lots of fantastic comments there thank you so much so as we said earlier there are many advantages of an lfp battery but not many disadvantages one is the weight a bit heavier than other batteries but it was sandy monroe said that the lfp battery is not as powerful as other batteries so that got me thinking because i hadn't heard that one before but it reminded me of this time last year when i ordered the tesla model 3 standard range and it told me that it would do 0 to 60 in 5.3 seconds. Now, I, I don't need that kind of speed, but it's kind of nice to what arrives is what you ordered. But when it arrived, it was 0 to 60 in 5.8 seconds. Most of the time, it doesn't matter. Nice to have that little bit of power when you need it, but I don't use it that often. And of course, the other thing was it was supposed to come with 278 miles of range, but it had turned up with 263. So that's two things that made me think, well, I think Sandy Monroe's got a good point here. It's a wonderful car. I'm glad I bought it when I did because the price has gone up a lot and I probably couldn't afford it now. I definitely couldn't afford the Y. So if you can afford one, then that's great. And if you get it through work, that is really the very best thing to do. So I hope you can uh, subscribe and like. And please don't forget to take your coffee mug wherever you go, because uh, they're much better than using single-use plastic. Thanks for all your comments and subscribe, and hope to see you next time. Thanks very much. Bye.